and I hope that you guys are having an absolutely magical day wherever you are when this video finally reaches you. I am so excited for today's video. We are diving into yet another paranormal game, except this paranormal game is an exception to our paranormal game series because this is a game that I frequently played as a kid and it actually worked and that is the cat scratch paranormal game now typically on my channel if this is your first time here when i talk about different paranormal games i always advise you not to play them or i really heavily suggest that if you are going to play them you know the dangers of it and you know just know more about the game than just the fact that it could be spooky and could be fun but this game is one that i didn't even really realize as a kid I don't know what we thought we were doing, but we played it a lot. And so for today's video, I wanted to break down this paranormal game, share with you how it's played, what the object of the game is, and then share with you guys what my personal experience with the game was. Because as I said, I played this game a lot and it worked. Like it actually worked. And I don't know how or why, but it was just chilling. But before we get into all that spooky stuff, I would very quickly like to thank today's video sponsor, Function of Beauty. Now, if you guys have been on my channel for a while, you guys would know that I take my hair care very seriously, which if this is your first video, you might not believe that because I desperately need to get my hair done again. <laughs> but I absolutely love partnering up with Function of Beauty because I love what they stand for and I love that it's a customizable Hair, that it's customizable hair care. So all that you do is you fill out a quick two minute quiz just outlining your hair type, your hair goals, what you want from a shampoo, conditioner, treatment, etc., and they will provide that for you. On top of that, not only is it customizable on the inside, but you're even able to choose the name that gets put onto your bottle. So all of these say, function of Haley. I'll actually insert a clip so you can see them a little bit closer, but they all say function of Haley. You can customize the color, you can customize the scent, customize the name, and like I said, make sure that you have shampoo, conditioner, and hair care treatments that are catered to your hair's needs, which is amazing. Better yet, there's no parabens, sulfates, GMOs, or toxins, and it's 100% vegan and cruelty-free. Function of Beauty also offers a subscription service where you can get ongoing deliveries of what you need, or you can have them set for a certain amount of months. So if you're somebody like me who only washes your hair once a month, then you can set it once a month. If you're somebody like me who only washes your hair once a week, then you can have it set for further out. Or if you're somebody who washes your hair more frequently, you can have your ongoing deliveries closer together. It really just depends on what your wants and needs are. So if you guys are interested in testing out Function of Beauty, you can click the link down in my description for 20% off of your order. And once again, thank you so much to Function of Beauty for sponsoring today's video. Me and my hair, thank you for that. Or my hair and I, thank you for that. But with that being said, let's get into this paranormal game. So I've actually been thinking about this game a lot recently for some reason. I've been thinking about the fact that I wanted to talk about it with you guys and just thinking about my experiences with it because essentially how you're supposed to play this game is it's supposed to be a minimum of two people. There needs to be the storyteller and there needs to be the individual who wants to have the experience. The individual who wants to have the experience lays down and the storyteller begins a story. Now, by the end of the story, when you sit up, the individual who wanted to have this happen to them and you lift up their shirt, there are cat scratches, well, cat scratches, red scratches down their back. And what's really creepy is we used to do this at sleepovers and when you're in a big group of people, you realize that nobody touched their back, but when they sat up, there were scratches on their back every single day. Time, which is super eerie. So before I get into my personal experiences with the game, I wanted to kind of break down what is being said about the game online, and then I can talk about what I did and what happened to me and my friends. All right, so it says, the most dangerous games, cat scratch. And it says, play at your own risk. Players, you need one listener and one storyteller, and then bystanders are optional. Requirements. A dark, quiet room, a pillow, which is also optional, candles and matches or a lighter, other small, dim, atmospheric light sources are optional. Instructions. 
Begin at any time. Draw the curtains or otherwise block the windows. Clear a space on the floor, one big enough to lie down comfortably on. If using candles or other small light sources, set them up around the room and light them if necessary. If using candles, be mindful of the open flames and keep them away from anything flammable and keep a fire extinguisher nearby. Turn off the room's primary light sources. Storyteller. Sit down on the ground in the center of the cleared space, cross-legged. If using the pillow, place the pillow on your lap. Listener. Lie down on the ground face up with your head on the storyteller's lap on top of the pillow if using. Bystanders, if present, sit down on the ground cross-legged in a circle around the storyteller and the listener. Is everyone comfortably seated? Good. Let's begin. Telling the story. So the listener will close their eyes. The storyteller will place both their index and middle fingers of both hands on the listener's temples and begin to rub them in a slow, steady, circular motion. The bystanders cannot make any noise and cannot speak. For the listener, they're meant to relax and not move. Concentrate on the sensation of your temples. Feel your body sink into the ground and keep your eyes closed. The storyteller will continue gently rubbing the listener's temples in that same slow, steady, circular motion. Still, the bystander should not be speaking and not making any noise. The listener will not move. They just need to keep their eyes closed. When the storyteller sees the moment is right, they can begin speaking. You must tell a story along the lines of the following story. You are walking through a dark alley late at night. You are the only one there. The ground is slick with rain. The alley is filled with garbage cans and litter. But then you hear something, a movement in the garbage cans. You pick up your pace. You want to get out of the alley fast, but then you see something. Red eyes, glowing red cat eyes. They are, the cat, they are the eyes of an enormous cat. You run, but the cat chases you and jumps on you. It scratches you. One, two, three. Cat scratch, cat scratch, cat scratch. As soon as the storyteller has completed the story, the listener will open their eyes and very quickly sit up. The storyteller will gently lift the back of the listener's shirt to reveal the skin beneath. The listener should feel nothing, but the storyteller and bystander should see something. Marks, long red ones, like scratches appearing gradually on the listener's back. If nothing appears, you may want to try it again with an alternate story. But if those marks appear, you will know you have been visited. Perhaps you have a new pet now, but perhaps not. Best set out a dish of water from time to time, just in case. Like, what? So that's exactly like how I remembered it, but the story that we told was very, very different. The story that we told when I was a kid was that the cat had green, golden eyes. And I remember that so specifically in my mind. Like when I look back on these sleepovers when we played the game, I very vividly remember the green, golden eyes. So back when I was younger, one of the biggest things to do at sleepovers would be to tell ghost stories or scare one another and just make it like unbearable to go to sleep. And this was a game that we commonly played. Now I played this game a lot. And to be honest with you, the first time that I played it, I don't actually remember where I was, but I remember that after realizing that it worked, I did this to everybody as a kid, which looking back probably was not the smartest thing to do, but I really did. I went around and did it to my mom, my dad, did it to everybody. And nobody could understand how these marks would appear. They really do appear, you guys. Like I couldn't believe it. And we would test the theory that it could be the floor. We would lay on all different surfaces, in the bed, on the carpet, on the hardwood. Me and my friends tried it. And every single time there were red scratches down the backs of like whoever was playing the game. So our version was different. Like I said, I don't remember the exact version, but I do remember that it kind of started with the same thing. Well, first of all, let's say that I'm the storyteller. I would lay my friend in my lap with like a pillow on my lap and massage the temples and I would tell them, you feel yourself sinking, you feel yourself getting heavy, you're getting really tired, you're about to see what I explained to you. And we would basically say something along the lines of, you're leaving your house, it's late at night, the sky is dark, all these like explanatory things, like descriptions. You would really dig into the description of the environment so that the person could really visualize it. And we would say, as you're walking up the street, you hear a noise similar to that story. And when you look over, you see a cat with green golden eyes. I remember that's exactly how we told it. You go to the movie theater, you go inside and you watch the movie. When you go back outside, you're walking to your car and you hear something. 
you look behind you and watching you still is the cat with green golden eyes. Then like multiple scenes would take place. You'd wind up at an ice cream shop and you see the cat with green golden eyes. Until eventually in my version, well, it was like our version that we told as kids, you would find yourself back at your house and you'd see your mother on the floor at the top of the stairs and standing next to her was the cat with green golden eyes. And it basically comes after you and it scratches you. And then you would say, now sit up. And you would jolt the person awake. I don't think you'd say now sit up, but something like sit up, like, I don't know, you get the person to sit up. And when you would lift up their shirt, there was actually what looked like cat scratches on their back. And at first when I was younger, even though I believed so much in the paranormal, this one just seemed so fun to me. I think it was the fact that it was about a cat. I didn't really see any harm in it. But um, I remember thinking to myself, wow, the human mind is so powerful. Like when you really visualize something, that's crazy. You can get scratches on your back. But as the years went on, I started asking myself, well, they didn't know that the story was gonna end unless they'd done it before with the cat scratching their back. So why was there actual scratch marks? Some believe that there is a cat entity out there that is summoned during this ritual and will scratch your back for like summoning it there. Others think that it's just kind of like a mind thing where your mind just makes it happen. And then there's people who just literally have no idea how on earth the game works, but they just think that it's cool. And I, as I started to get older, realized that I probably shouldn't be playing a game where you wind up scratched up by something that isn't there. Um, so I definitely stopped playing that game, but it was only like, it was one of the only games that I've ever played because I never played paranormal games, but for some reason, this one was one of them that I played. And when I recently saw it surface online, I was like, oh my gosh, I've actually played that game. I remember every single time that I would lift up someone's shirt and see the scratches down their back, I would literally, my jaw would drop even though I knew that it would happen. And this was around the same time too, you guys, where we were playing games like concentrate like I think it's like crack an egg with your head let the yolk drip down let the yolk drip down <laughs> and then you say concentrate concentrate children are crying people are dying concentrate concentrate and I forget oh you would walk to a ledge and then you would say like they got pushed or something like that but that game for some reason really scared me it wasn't a ritual but that really scared me during that time too so there was a few little sleepover things that we did that were pretty creepy, I'd say, but this was one of them that I was like, oh my gosh. Now, as far as paranormal games and rituals go, this one, it even says online, has like a lower risk of anything bad happening. You get the scratches and you basically move on. They don't say that this spirit or entity or whatever it is sticks around. It's not like a sacrifice, but definitely play any of these games at your own risk. I don't recommend messing around with the paranormal because it's not a game and it is very real. And while plenty of people will play things and not have experiences, you don't want to be the one that does. But I definitely played this game. I'm alive to tell the tale. And I'm curious to hear, did you guys ever play this game? And if you did, what was your experiences with it? I would absolutely love to know. But that is essentially the Cat Scratch Paranormal Game that I played as a kid. <laughs> so if you guys have played the game, let me know. If you've never heard of the game, what do you think is going on with it? Why do you think people wind up with scratches on their backs when they were laying flat and nobody touched their backs? Definitely let me know all of your theories. With that being said, once again, I would like to thank Function of Beauty for sponsoring today's video. I will have a link down in my description. You guys can click that link to get 20% off of your first order. If you guys are new to my channel or you are just not yet subscribed but you do enjoy my videos, I would super love it if you would go ahead and click that subscribe button. And please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it. Remember my loves, do all things with kindness. And until next time, I love you guys.